Let's consider a cube, which has a length of one centimeter on all sides. The volume of a cube is calculated using the formula V equals L times L times L, or V equals L cubed. Because L equals one centimeter, V is one centimeter cubed, or one centimeter cubed written like this, which can also be called one cubic centimeter. So we'll remember the volume of this cube is one cubic centimeter. Now we'll bring in two more identical cubes and join them together. We'll number them as one, two, and three. Now we'll bring in three more in front of these and we'll number these as four, five, and six. We'll bring in another three and we'll number these as seven, eight, and nine. So now we have a layer consisting of nine identical cubes joined together. Now we'll add nine more cubes on top of this layer. We have nine in the first layer, so we'll continue numbering the cubes starting with 10. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, and 18. So these two layers of nine cubes have a total of 18 cubes. Now we'll add nine more cubes to the top of these two layers. This is cube number 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, and 27. You can see that now we've made a large cube consisting of 27 small cubes. Recall that each one of the small cubes has a length of one centimeter on each side. Therefore, its volume is one centimeter cubed. Because the large cube is made up of 27 small cubes, its total volume must be 27 centimeters cubed, or 27 cubic centimeters. Also, if you look closely at this diagram, it's easy to see here that the length of each side of the large cube is three centimeters. Now we'll recall the formula we gave earlier for the volume of a cube. If the length of one side of a cube is L, then the volume is equal to L cubed. The length of each side of the large cube is three centimeters. So V is equal to three centimeters in brackets cubed. Three centimeters in brackets cubed is equal to three centimeters times three centimeters times three centimeters, which can be regrouped as three times three times three centimeters times centimeters times centimeters. Three times three is equal to nine times three or 27. So three times three times three is equal to 27. Centimeters times centimeters times centimeters is called centimeters cubed. Three times three times three is called three cubed or three to the power three, shown like this. So what we've illustrated here is three to the power three or three cubed is equal to three times three times three or 27. We can also say that two to the power three or two cubed is equal to two times two times two. Two times two is equal to four and four times two is equal to eight. So two cubed is equal to eight. We can also calculate four cubed, which is equal to four times four times four. Four times four is equal to 16. So four times four times four is equal to 16 times four, which is equal to 64. Similarly, we can calculate five cubed, which is equal to five times five times five. Five times five is equal to 25. So five times five times five is equal to 25 times five which is equal to 125. Larger numbers cubed can be determined using a calculator. For example, 24 cubed is equal to 24 times 24 times 24, which using a calculator gives us 13,824. Now we'll look at something called cube roots. Taking the cube root of a number is just the opposite operation to cubing a number. For example, cubing two, means multiplying two by itself three times, or two times two times two, which gives us eight. Whereas taking the cube root of eight is finding a number which multiplied by itself three times is equal to eight. And that number is two. Remember to show a number is cubed, we just give it an exponent of three like this. Cube root is shown like this, with the eight in a radical and a little three here. To find the cube root of a number, it helps us to remember what the cubes of some numbers are. 
For example, let's say we want to find the cube root of 64. Recalling some of the cubes we talked about earlier, we see that 4 cubed, or 4 multiplied by itself 3 times, is equal to 64. Therefore, we can say the cube root of 64 is equal to 4, because 4 times 4 times 4 is equal to 64. It will help us to know a few perfect cubes. First of all, let's find out what we mean by a perfect cube. You might recall that an integer is a whole number. It does not have any fractions or decimals with it. A perfect cube is defined as an integer that has an integer value as its cube root. So there are no fractions or decimals in either the cube or the cube root. Let's look at a few perfect cubes and their cube roots. We'll make a table with the cube roots in this column and their perfect cubes in this column. Remember, both cube roots and perfect cubes are integers. We'll start with the integer 1 as the cube root. 1 cubed is equal to 1 times 1 times 1, which comes out to 1. The next integer cube root is 2. 2 cubed is just 2 times 2 times 2, which comes out to 8. So we can say the perfect cube of 2 equals 8, or the cube root of the perfect cube 8 is equal to 2. The next integer cube root is 3. 3 cubed is equal to 3 times 3 times 3, and 3 times 3 times 3 is equal to 27. So 27 is a perfect cube whose cube root is the integer 3. Let's consider the integer 4. 4 cubed is 4 times 4 times 4. And 4 times 4 times 4 is 16 times 4, which is 64. The next integer cube root is 5. 5 cubed is equal to 5 times 5 times 5, which is 25 times 5, or 125. So the integer 5 cubed is 125, and the cube root of the perfect cube, 125, is equal to the integer 5. The last integer cube root we'll look at here is 6. 6 cubed is 6 times 6 times 6, which is 36 times 6, or 216. So 6 cubed is the perfect cube, 216. And the cube root of the perfect cube, 216, is equal to the integer 6. Knowing these 6 perfect cubes and their cube roots is very handy. They are commonly used, and it's very helpful to memorize them.